This is a brief introduction to membranes. As stated before, membranes differ from filters, and it's important to understand that, especially because both are selective barriers, but the interesting part on the membranes is that they permit the separation of certain species in the fluid, which typically filters will not. This is achieved by the combination of either sieving, which you already know is pretty similar to filtering. Uh, if the molecule does not fit the pore, well, then it will be impossible for it to pass through. But the interesting part or the important part to consider on membranes is that we focus more on the chemical side, or let's say the molecular level size, in which the sorption diffusion mechanism is the one that we are considering the most. Uh, separation is achieved by selectively passing, so we have the membrane, and certain material are going to pass through due to their nature and interaction with the membrane, and some of them will not. From now on, we should not say pass through, we should use the concept permeate, which is the actual definition or the chemical or process separation definition of a material being able to permeate through a membrane. And this can happen to one or more components of the stream. The main idea is, of course, to be able to separate if you have left side and right side. If both of them end up with the same conditions, and the same uh, concentrations, well, this is not a membrane by definition. So that's important to consider, guys. you got to have a change in composition in order to consider this a membrane. Now, this occurs while retarding the passage of one or more other components, either retarding or literally avoiding. It doesn't necessarily have to be slow. Some cases you're going to be uh, like the sieving system I was telling you about. If you're focusing your attention in monovalent ions, such as maybe sodium, magnesium, uh, maybe chlorine, and you have a DNA DNA strand, which is of course huge compared to these molecules, well, the DNA will not fit through these pores. If we're talking about pores of the size of one atom, DNA is, well, it's a product which is containing lots of atoms, lots of molecules, or let's say molecules bonded between each other. So retarding is not the concept right here. It's literally not passing through or not permeating. An important guy is to consider, maybe you have been studying mass transfer already, so you know that penetration is also an important factor in mass transfer. Let's define the difference. Permeation is the process by which a chemical species moves through a material on the molecular level, which is different from penetration, which is or could be described as the process by which a chemical species moves through a material on a non-molecular level. So that's interesting. One is at the molecular level and the other one is at the non-molecular level. Okay, so membranes can selectively be separating materials depending on either particle size, molecular weights, and maybe even charge. Examples are macromolecular mo uh, materials. What do we mean with macromolecular? Maybe sugars, starch, proteins, uh, nucleotides, uh, the DNA, for instance. Or we can focus mostly into monovalent ions, or let's say commonly ions, maybe magnesium ion, maybe even the carbonate ion. There are many ways in which we could find ions, which hopefully you get the difference. Macromolecular versus ions is huge, maybe thousand or million, well, not million, I think million is too much, but thousand times more is typically the case. Membranes have gained an important place in the chemical technology industry and are used in broad ranges of applications. Still, I would say that most of these applications are for water, but still we are getting more applications. Membranes are booming right now, not only because they are, let's say, seen as a novelty, but right now there are lots of material and when you have new materials, you can test new type of membranes and see which type of interactions you get. Once again, the main focus is in the molecular level. You want to see which and how the interactions are working within. Membranes are fabricated mainly from natural fibers or more commonly from synthetic polymers. Uh, never, uh, newer technologies, as stated before, guys, are being now produced and new materials are coming into play. For instance, ceramics, metals, or maybe as stated before, natural fibers, we can think of the cellulite. 
Memories are fabricated in different shapes. The most common ones, flat sheet, as the normal filter you will expect, tubes, hollow fibers, which will be this example right here, a little, uh, let's say, one hollow fiber, spiral wound sheets, and so on. Now, it's very important to consider that the final shape or presentation will be either a module or cartridge. Uh, this is the case here. As you can see, there are many hollow fibers. I don't know, I will guess 1,000 hollow fibers. Each one of them is carrying the process of membrane. So technically here, we could say that we have million membranes happening at the time, but as engineering or engineers, we will use a single unit. We will say this is the membrane system or the membrane unit operation. And we call this the cartridge system, which is also very common, especially in membrane technology. You, you will see that there are filters, cartridges, or units instead of the actual unit per se, which is this uh, hollow fiber. Okay. And finally, the membrane is almost impermeable to the solute, meaning that you want to avoid the uh, certain solutes, which you don't want to separate. And of course, you want to see which materials will be separating. That's all the way. The, the main point of membranes is analyzing which molecules permeate and which molecules will not.